Holy Ghost. There it is. I hear it now. Okay, so I'm not new to this area. I've been here before. It's been a while. So I'm an eighth generation preacher. I'm on my way down here to Reading. Uh, Brother Bill has asked me for a few extra days, so I'm going to go. The only thing we disagree on, he and I, mostly, there's a couple of things that probably could become a point of contention, but we decided to stay away from them. But he's, uh, he's only fifth generation. They're new people. Yeah. <laughs> and I tell him every time I see him, you new guys. You new guys. Holy Ghost. So I come here to bless. You understand? Yeah. I'm not here to curse this land. I'm here to bless this land. In the name of Jesus. And I do apologize to y'all. Is it okay to walk around? Yes. Yeah. All right. Because I got to get my 10,000 steps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so y'all going to find out I'm a battle wearied soldier. War zone guy, treachery, I live with that. Like the other day, I was in this real famous uh, place. And they was just talking about uh, the valley of the shadow of death and all this stuff. And I, and I actually said, and I didn't know exactly how, how y'all don't like to be told stuff that... Uh, that don't go with what you're saying. And so this fellow was talking, and I said, excuse me, the valley of the shadow of death is where I live. Don't curse my home. (laughs) That guy got so flustered he couldn't keep going. (laughs) So that's me. I like to be contentious, I guess. (laughs) This right here is Miss Hogan. Yeah. yeah. Come over here. With, there you go. Put your little hand up there. That's a girl. We, we completed 52 years of marriage. Yeah. To each other. <laughs> That's not built up over time. Different, different shirts. No. Same shirt. And I bless this lady. Y'all hear me? This is one loyal human being. She loves me. She loves Jesus. And that makes it work. Sure does. So I love you, Mom. You want to say something to these folks? No? So you're going to let me work? Is that all right? Love you. Okay, so have a seat over here. You don't need anything? Need a Diet Coke or something? No, you okay? All right. So I'll send Mr. James to get one. No, you don't want one? All right. That's good. (laughs) Bless you, Holy Ghost and fire. So I'm 72. I'm healthy. Uh, Some of y'all are going to get really mad at me. And I do apologize about the goodness of God in my life. (laughs) But you understand, it's not my fault. It's mercy. I am living in mercy. That lady right there and myself are healthy today. And that is a beautiful thing. You hear me? I drove through y'all's snow quality. Is that right? Snow quality passed there a while ago. My goodness, y'all got a mess up there. Fortunately, I had a four-wheel drive, and I did all right. 
So I'll bless this land in the name of Jesus. Okay, so I'm running number 60 marathon on day nine. We're on day, what is this, number three, four? What are we at? Three. three. So I got just a couple of days, so I'm, I'm, I'm tapering my, my running. And I'm ready. I can do it today. I'm ready. It's pretty nice. I'm going to be doing it on that uh, Sacramento River Trail there in Reading. Yeah. I like running there. It's a nice place. So I really like what I do, y'all. I never did get bored and quit. I just always stayed. God somehow touched us to like what we do and to believe that we're making a change and helping things. Amen. So I want, you, I want you to understand the stuff I'm fixing to tell you is not my fault. Okay. All these songs we sang is because of that. Yeah. <laughs> that. That's exactly the right thing to say, what, what was sung. I appreciate that personally because I do this every day of my life, this right here, every day. I'm somewhere now. I'm now. I'm fortunate. I'm in 90 different nations now. Uh, our work has grown. It's a big old thing now. My goodness, my wife and I left with two little kids and didn't know what we was doing. And I'm not sure we do yet, <laughs> but it's working. And there's lots, of, lots of hundreds of thousands of people saved. Lots of thousands of churches and. Yeah, but we stayed the same, and I kept my blue jeans and my beard. And so there's some goodness happening. Okay, so I need to explain to you, you're going to notice a difference in me. Uh, what you're going, and, it, and it's, of course, it's not my fault. The mercy of God, I have discovered to be its own entity. It's, it's, it's powerful. When it says grace and mercy came, you have to understand those are some of the greatest powers God has. And, I, and I've really gone into that mercy. It's all guided by the love of God, right? Okay, so, so when I was young, fella, you see I've got over that. Okay. When I was a young fella, uh, I told my wife, we're going to raise the dead. Now, that is the way young people are. they just impetuous and bold, and they don't know you can't do those things. I never did know you couldn't. You want to know whose fault that is? Mama. Mama raised us to believe the Word of God. From the beginning, y'all remember, you older people will, you remember those flannel graph things where you had the little pictures, you stick them on the, and now you got, you know, movie up here, but before you had a, had a little flannel thing, you stick these little pictures and it stick to it. That's what mama had. She taught us all the miracles of the Bible from Genesis to Revelations with using those little picture things. And it turns out we believed her. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> Some, uh, go for it, Mom. Gets old. I know how it gets. Stick with it. There's good fruit in the mix. That's right. So something happened. I told my wife, we're going to raise the dead. Well, how do you do that? How do you... How do you go from boasting to doing the job? <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Because there is a way to do it. So how do you figure it out? What we did, we took the Bible apart, her and I. Uh, we went to the store and bought notebooks, regular old spiral notebooks. And I looked through the Bible and I found all these people that I believe did something that God asked them to do. And I gave them each their own notebook. And it turns out there's quite a few 
people that were successful. And I started looking through there to the ones, what did they do? What was their prayer life? What was their family life? What was their kids? What was the following generations after they were gone? How did they get the fire, the power that they had accumulated into the next generation? That's the goal. And so uh, started looking through this list and it turns out that one of the threads that goes from Genesis to Revelations is dead raising. It was, I guess, quite common for God's people. So I told her, we're going to do that. And she said to me, we need to start a little bit something less. (laughs) Yeah, something like that. And so I told her, nope, let's just start with the top notch. If really God is the life giver, you young people, listen to me. If God truly is who we think he is, go for the gold. Yeah. So we started in in, uh, four years of misery. Everybody I prayed for died. Nothing worked out. It was just, it was awful. But then it just one day changed. I don't know why. I just know we didn't quit. We stayed on course, stayed true to the call, stayed true to the vision, stayed true to the anointing. And then all of a sudden, whack. So I want to show y'all, I want to show y'all, you look at my hand, this thing, it's got a missing finger, see, y'all look, see, verify, no finger, see the scars, see all that, see all the scars, all that, this is called a working man hand. (laughs) Sometimes if you're a working guy and you're aggressive like me, you're going to latch onto something you shouldn't have, it'll bite you back. (laughs) And that's what's happened to me. But I want you to understand that this hand is not normal. It looks like a normal working man's hand. The difference is really crucial, though. 39 dead raisins. Right there. You hear me, you young people? So doable. I find it doable. Hear me? You hear me? I need your brashness. I need your aggression. I need you not to bow to old people unbelief. I was taught that people get the concrete set. You can't hardly teach them anymore. Turns out to be true. (laughs) See, you're still, your concrete's not set yet. (laughs) Still... Move it around. (laughs) So you're blessed. You hear me? We can do this. Now, I teach our people from the day they're born again. I teach them from the moment you accept Jesus Christ as Lord, you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus. From that moment, you are free to raise the dead. They don't need my permission, and they don't need yours. And that has created uh, an amazing, uh, wow, there's lots of good stuff going on. So something has happened to us in the last year. There's a brand new, and even though uh, there's chaos everywhere, I mean, there's hate and violence, man. I just I just came back from everywhere. I was just everywhere. I, I'm serious. I I was in all the continents just now in the last six months, and boy, things are messed up. But it's fun to me to fly through every all of this and 
be around all these wars and it not be affecting on me. I like God's energy. I certainly do. And I want to tell you a couple of things. I want to read you some Bible so you can feel like you're in church. Your religious spirit demands that. Okay. I was just over here in a no-name church right on the Canadian border, a little closer than we are here. North Dakota. Out in the middle of this field, it was most it was corn as far as you could see. Geese, oh my gosh. Only thing wrong was I forgot my shotgun. I didn't know, I didn't know it was flying. I didn't know they were it was flight was happening. I'd have had me a truckload of geese. Ducks, man. I like them smoked. Them things are good. Okay, so, so, <laughs> let's do it. I'm that guy from a swamp. That's what you do. You eat them. They're good too, boy. Okay, so, all right, here we go. These are Amish people. Y'all understand Amish people? I don't know how it happened, but I broke in with them. They liked me. <laughs> I just, that's odd to me because they're so uh, closed. And so I get up there in North Dakota. It's a little Amish church out in the middle of a cornfield. I mean, you can see forever. And the little, little building is just packed with these people and they're just, you know, they look like me, but a little bit different. <laughs> and it, I don't ever know what God's going to do. I never know. I'm prepared for him to have his way and do whatever he wants to, but sometimes he takes me up on it. <laughs> it's pretty nice. <laughs> so, no, it's awesome. It is, man. I am so, see, your problem besides me being healthy, you know what it is? I'm 72. I've outlived all my enemies. <laughs> Serious. And I'm happy. <laughs> I am literally happy. I just am pleased that God's let me be happy finally. Joy is a good weapon. And so I'm in there with these people in this room, you know, and it's probably 150 of them, maybe. And they've never seen the power of God. They've never seen the fire. And that's what I do. So something's got to give. Y'all, yeah. there was this young lady come up. She's beautiful. Golly, a pretty girl. But she, when she was walking up, she was uh, like, uh, like stuck like this sideways. But she was walking this way, but she was stuck this way, you know. But she was a pretty girl. And she'd come up right there, and I'm looking at her. I said, Stop. And she, she, I said, girl, what in the world? The rest of us don't look like you. What happened to you? She said, I got run over by a truck. I said, it looks like it. It looks just like it. Imagine rolling, you know, underneath that thing. <clears throat> It'll probably break you and you'll stick that way. That's what it looked like. <laughs> I 
Now, I'm warning you. I'm a shrewd old hunter, trapper fella. I'm going to get you. <laughs> this is on, buddy. We're going to do this. Unless these fellas and ladies stand up and say, we've had enough. And I'm going to say, thank you. I'm going home watch football. <laughs> Holy Ghost. What? Oh, we'll stop at Subway on the way. Look, I asked her, what is, what is holding you crooked? She said, well, when my body twisted, it snapped. And they put all this metal and screws and nuts and bolts in me. I've had, she had five operations in five years. And she's, it's done. She's done. And she's a pretty young mother. She's, golly, that's not awesome to me. I'm going to go on record. You ready? I disagree with that. I don't care what hell's plan is. We're going to stand up against it in the name of Jesus. And by the glory of the gospel, heaven will fix her. And that's how it's got to roll out. So here's how it went. I'm telling you, it scared me, my goodness, because I do it all the time. I'm always aggressive. You see, I look you right in the face. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of you at all. And even though y'all won the other day, if college thing, I still am not afraid of you, but I do bless you. That was a good game. I saw part of it. Okay. It's simple, Elijah. It's not hard, son. But you have to let the Holy Ghost run through you. You have to be a conduit of the energy. Hear me? And I'm right. And I walk up on that girl and I'm just looking at her. And it was, it, to me, it's simple. Jesus. But what happened, I backed up. She picked up off the ground. I wasn't even close to her. She picked up off the ground and something tossed her. Some kind of energy. We all saw it. It happened so fast, you couldn't, uh, couldn't catch her. And this broken human being, I told my wife on the way home, it's like God didn't get the memo or something. He just picks her up and chunks her. <laughs> and she hits the deck. Oh. Bam. Oh. And I told my wife, get my coat. <laughs> oh. I got I to gotta roll out of here. Oh. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> This is going to go negative, I can tell you. There ain't no way this ain't going to brighten up. Y'all, I had no clue. <clears throat> She's out. Boom, God knocked her. Boom. And I was so happy about that, she, that she was knocked out. So I, I hurried up and prayed for the rest of the people and left. Well... I go back down there. That was Saturday night, just a few days ago. That was Saturday night. But Sunday morning, right, I'm back down there. And I'm looking for her. And I'm, I'm over in the corner over there. And I'm looking. And then a pastor comes up. The guy invited me. He goes, do you know what happened? I said, no, sir. <laughs> Amish guy. I wish I could talk like they did. It's just the cutest thing to me. They, their accent. I like it. He goes, that girl that flew. I said, why didn't you tell me you had people that fly? <laughs> he said, we don't. <laughs> this one's on you, Brother David. <laughs> I, st oh. I knew that was coming. I said, what happened? He said, that girl is my wife's best friend. 
And they've been praying and praying and praying year after year, and it gets worse and worse. He said, you come here and say the name of Jesus one time. She flies through the air, bam, hits the deck. She goes home, and for the first time in five years, sleeps all night. Come on. <laughs> but that ain't where it quit. She wakes up in the morning, and she's not crooked anymore. Oh. Yeah. 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 And then they, the husband starts trying to find the metal. All the metal is gone. Oh. Yeah. yeah. God healed that lady. We've had her tested, her own doctors, and man, they just, everybody's tripped out. God healed that young woman. And I told that pastor, go get her. I want to see her up face to face. He went and brought her up. Dude, she couldn't, she couldn't even get it. She just started bawling. She never got to me. Melted right into the floor. And she was supposed to be singing, so we lost the singer right there. Isn't that awesome? Yes. Here's what I want you to say. I want that in my life. Say it. Yes. Listen to me. There's a new day happening. Yeah, evil is rising. You're right. But that's not my goal. My goal is not to sit here and talk to you about evil. My goal is to sit here and talk to you about the new wave of the power of God that's coming. Because it's here. It's on us. It's imminent. It's falling. It's happening. Hmm. And for some reason, he's letting me be in it. I got energy. You see me. 72, had service this morning, drove through that pass, all that snow and ice, got here, had about 30 minutes, took a shower, and here we are. Look, look at me. Say it. I want that. Say it. Now you do. I'm not on any meds, even though it looks like it. I'm not. I got asked in one church, how big was that Red Bull you drank? Weren't no Red Bull, son. It's only Jesus. I what is wrong with folks? Okay, so it's okay for me to use the Amplified Bible or in English. You okay with that? All right. Okay, because I can understand it better. All right. Now, I want to share, there's like five chapters that have come and camped out in my spirit. All right. And I just can't get away from them things. And they're causing... Hell to evacuate. I mean, hell is picking up and leaving. And that's what we want. Say it. We want victory. Say it. We do. And I I know y'all, been knowing y'all for a while. and, And listen, and I know what you want. I know what he called me for. I know what you're after. This thing is working for us. Yeah. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. Okay. Acts chapter 4. I asked my wife earlier, which one of these four or five chapters should I talk about? What about this one? What about this one? Because it don't matter. The results are going to be exactly the same. It's the anointing. The power's in the anointing. Because you don't know, but I got attacked. Uh, November the 17th was two years. Boy, it was the best laid plan I've ever seen. I, I'm an eighth generation preacher's son, and we, my family, we understand the treachery of the church. You hear me? Yeah. It's harsh sometimes. And boy, all of a sudden, I got a phone call, right? Brother David, you need to investigate. Hell's standing at your front door. I said, you're wrong. 
Things are good for us. And he said, Brother David, please just go take a look. I said, all right. I walked, you know, and I made a few phone calls. I did a little investigation. Unleashed a few bloodhounds, you know. And they called me right back. Brother David, you're dead. I said, that's not right. Because I was so busy. I, I, listen, I cannot explain to you how awesome it is to be healthy and be a great grandpa. Yeah. Amen. Man, I like that job. <laughs> Just the other day, the littlest one, the brand newest little one, she ain't that tall. She's about knee high to me. And I'm sitting in our prayer room, got this real nice prayer thing. And I'm sitting in there, shot buying, you know. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. This is done. I'm going to sit right in here and I am not moving till the feet of Jesus walk up. I am after one thing in my life. And that's to see those sandals that John said were, in, were not even legal for us to untie. I will see those things. And I will seek heaven until he releases them to me. It's going to happen. You hear me, right? It's got to happen. It's got to be released. And I'm sitting there, John dying, you know? And this little old bitty, all of a sudden that little person comes up and grabs my pants leg, pulling on it. You know, and I'm, you understand how important I am? And so, you know, I look at her, and here comes that little hand. Y'all understand how important she is, right? Yeah. Paul, I reached and get her, and then one of the greatest times of my life happened. You, you grandpa's over here. This is a great grandchild, though. You wait, buddy. There's another level of awesome. And I, I pulled that little old girl up there. If you would have seen her, she turned around and the look, she, the smile, the contentment. And she reached and grabs my beard. And she's just right out of eye with me. And she puts that little face right here. And she's got a hold of my beard. And she starts cooing. Because yeah. mm, mm. you see, in her world... I am the most powerful being. Do you hear me? And, and she absolutely knows how to manipulate me. <laughs> it's true. And I told my, my wife, I said to her, I said, who's on the wheel? She said, I don't know, David. I said, well, whoever it is, get the lawyer to change it. This one gets everything. <laughs> So if I could make a suggestion to you about the way you seek God, I would, I would advise you to go up to the throne of heaven because you've been given entrance. You're not illegitimate. You're not a bastard. You are a son. And not only a son, you're a favorite. You are the apple of his eye. Washington people, you know about apples. <laughs> Smarter than I look. <laughs> it's good to be healthy, y'all. I want you to have health. That's different than being healed. That lady that touched the hem of his garment, what did Jesus tell her? Because she got healed right on the spot, but Jesus upgraded her. What did he tell her? Your faith has done what? Made you whole. What I need you to do is search that. Do a word search on that. That means hell has to pay you back everything he took. All the loss and lack that was in her life got restored to her. And being healthy is different, y'all. Yeah. I need that. 
because it's real. You know, if I can go right out that front door right now and go out and run a, in the rain, it don't matter. None of that matters. It's just a distraction. I can just go out there and run an ultra marathon if I want to. That, that's a good feeling. That's power, buddy. That's mercy. <laughs> now, I need to tell you about this Acts chapter 4 right here. I get a little bit aggressive with this stuff. Because I know how to do this job. I don't need you to critique and criticize and wait for the mistake. Because there's not going to be one. I'm not allowed any. Because I'm right about this. Jesus is king. Book stops right there. Now, Acts chapter 4, please open your thing. I got the Amplified. I don't know what version you have. I'm not interested. Thank you. (laughs) And it says, (laughs) look, now watch this. While they, Peter and John, were talking, something happened. There they are having a church service, right? And somebody comes up and rudely interrupts them. What? Yeah. High priest, you know it's going to be religious people. High priest, military commander of the temple. What? What atrocity have these boys done? And look at this. Now, look, if you're going to think up a religious name, don't name yourself sad, you see. (laughs) I'm not going to join you because I'm happy, you see. I don't want no sad, you see, nothing to do in my life. It took me my whole life to get happy. Now, why are you going to come up and make me join with a sad? And you don't even believe in resurrection? Dude. Float your boat somewhere else. (laughs) Okay, so what sin did Peter and John do? How many of y'all read your Bible in here? (laughs) Okay, chapter 3. What happened in chapter 3? Talk to me. A man got healed, okay? So let's, let's talk about a couple of questions because I'm the guy, I ask questions about everything. I want to know how everything works. Okay, so why did Jesus go to that temple all those times and preach and why did he leave that man sitting there for 40 years? That's a great question. Things are important. You hear me? We need to figure them out. We don't need to just take, what? I don't know. Let's go get a coffee. Yeah. Ain't that where this Seattle yep. thing happened up here? Yep. What a waste of money. Uh, <laughs> I'm serious. I, my, all my brothers grow coffee. I don't drink it unless I'm giving it. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> waste of money, boy. You need caffeine, you might as well get a shot of opium. (laughs) It's all drugs. Stay away from it. Jesus is king. (laughs) Well, I'm going to get some emails. Don't you dare give my email out. (laughs) So, so. So, you got this 40-year-plus guy been sitting by this gate. And here's another question. Here's another question. Same story. Peter and John have been with Jesus forever how long it was. Y'all decide. Whatever y'all teach in y'all's classes are great. Because I don't care. But they had the Messiah. They ate bread with him. But yet, they thought it necessary to go to the temple and pray. Why? 
We believe we got it figured out. We don't have to pray. So how many of y'all been with Jesus for three and a half, four years, watching him do miracles, helping him carry a suitcase, and yet you believe you don't need to pray and fast? Right. Something's wrong with the way you're thinking. We have to change. Because if Peter and John, who just was with Jesus for a good length of time, watched him do miracles, Peter, we think, historically, is the guy who pulled the knife, cut the guy's ear off. Jesus fixing to die. These people fixing to kill him. He reaches down, gets the ear, puts it back on, tells Peter, put your sword up. It's not time for that. Peter, I'm like Peter, petulous, aggressive, sword puller. That's me. (laughs) Something's wrong, y'all. And we're good to let it just sit there and idle, are you? I'm not. I want answers to these questions. I want to know how to get that man up at the gate beautiful. I don't want to leave him there. Peter goes walking up. What was Peter on the way to do? Tell me. Pray. Pray. Sure as the world turns, a man was going to pray. And he goes by and this fellow says, hey, excuse me, I'm hungry. Peter looks at him. What? Give me some money. Well, don't have any. But I do have something else you might be interested in. Tell me what he did. Let's do this. Let's, let's, let's act this out. What did Peter do? He said, silver and gold is not the question. I have something, though, I can give you. And he stuck his hand out and took the crippled guy, more than 40 years crippled, pulled him up off the ground. What a rude human. But when Peter got him up in the air, something happened. What happened? Hold on. Praising God comes next. What happened? That's right. What happened is his feet and his ankles received strength. So what does a touch, a touch, how does that How does that emanate energy into somebody? It's called the Holy Ghost and fire. And it moves through you and touches people. And energy to heal and save and deliver goes into those people. It's just a touch. It don't even make sense. Your logic as you're sipping on your little coffee, <laughs> talking all your logic. It don't work. Logic, don't, logic and reason is not what we're into here. What we're into is faith and the Holy Ghost and the fire. So, okay, so, when that man's feet and ankles receive strength, no therapy, Nobody's sitting there coaxing him to walk. He got energy in his feet and ankles. He went walking and leaping and praising God. And the people in the temple started screaming and shouting and running toward the miracle. They all knew him. You want to save Everett? One notable miracle. Come on, that's right. They'll be knocking those doors off the hinges. Amen. Then Seattle will come. come, on. Yes. come on. It will happen. Yes. But you have to realize it's not works. I'm not preaching works like prayer and this has got to happen. No, 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 no. We are saved by grace and mercy through the love of God. That is the way it is. Yeah. But people who are saved don't get tired because it don't work yeah. and quit. That's right. They keep pressing in. Come on. Come on. Amen. Keep believing. Keep pushing on hell. Yeah. Keep intimidating the enemy. That's right. And I'm right about this. 
I've watched the kingdoms of hell crumble and the kingdom of God take over. It's beautiful. <laughs> and all these people's there, and Peter and John are talking to them, telling them to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then we get to chapter four, the religious world got jealous. So if you're going to do miracles, you're going to jail. Now, I'm going to say this to you. I've been shot. I've been left for dead four times. Thrown in a river. They thought I was dead. So did I. I was knocked out. Fortunately, God's around. And I was, every time so far when I'm floating in the river, my mouth's up and I can breathe. And then I wake up, wow, I'm in the river. Well, you know. <laughs> and you're bleeding, you're hurt, you're broken. And I get out and I find her. And she, she's my nurse. She heals me. Sends me back to war. Toof. Go get them, boy. And I don't even know how many times I've been put in jail. A lot. And there ain't one proof that I've broken any law. Hear me? Yeah. Okay. So I'm inviting you to that. <laughs> and I already know I'm, on, I'm only going to get a certain percentage of interest and only a certain percentage of that will do it. But I'm good to try. Yeah. Isn't that something? Never did run out of the energy to try. Look at me. Yeah. Because I'm convinced it's right. Look what this says. Oh, this pleases me so much. Verse 2. I don't know what your version says, but let's do mine. It says, being vexed and indignant. Boy, if I can get that out of the religious people, I, boy, I sleep really well at night. I like to vex religious spirits. Man. And I'm good at it. Can you tell yet? <laughs> Being vexed and indignant through and through because watch what, look what made them mad. They didn't give a flying flip about that guy that was suffering for 40 years. <laughs> Look what it says. Because they were teaching the people and proclaiming. See, this is what I do. I follow these guys. I proclaim the resurrection of the dead. Amen. It's real, that's why. <laughs> you sit on the front seat, it's not my fault. <laughs> Holy Ghost. I oh, bless you. I've been around this planet 45 times, 20 different ways. Uh, we got this. Man, if you'd have seen the fire fall over in Johannesburg the other day, if you'd have seen the fire fall in Brisbane, Australia, I'd, I've not seen it that way. Golly, it's beautiful. I really need it in Everett. I, I just never know. I, mean, I don't know. No, it just comes sometimes. You know, I like that. Look what it says, verse 3. So he laid hands on him. Okay. What is the crime? Healing the sick. Serious. So he laid them in, put them in prison to the following day. And verse 4, everybody wants verse 4, but you need verse, uh, chapter 3 and verse 1, 2, and 3 to get verse 4. Hello? He 
it says, many of those who heard the message believed. Say it. I want to be that guy. Say it. I want to be that guy. That preaches the resurrection of the dead. That preaches the resurrection of the dead. Now look. Look. It never is about numbers. But if you realize the picture that's happening here, these boys just got put in jail for their message and 5,000 men got born again knowing these people just went to jail for the message. Now, there's something powerful happening. Say, I want to be part of it. I want to be part of it. We can do this. (laughs) Look at me. (laughs) <laughs> it's awesome to be happy after being tortured the way I have I like working for Jesus he's a good boss okay so the following day the magistrates the elders the scribes boy they got a whole team together they got all the best lawyers they got all the money they got all the power of the government And they get these two guys, two guys, no lawyers. They don't even speak the right Hebrew. Like me, I'm from a swamp. I don't even speak the same English hardly y'all speak. Uh Weirdest thing though, I can do this. And I like it and I'm good at it. You hear me? Yeah. And it says, look, Ananias, high priest, Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and others who belong to the high priestly relationship. They think they got this thing done. Okay, let's keep going. And they set the men in the middle. Do you understand whenever that kind of power sitting around the Sanhedrin, the strongest, most powerful religious organization of that day, And you put these two ignorant fishermen in there. You expect them to fold and get out of the game. But the problem is, people that are full of the Holy Ghost, we don't fold. We hold them. Jesus is coming. It says, it says, by what sort of power... Oh, shakalabada. <laughs> Dude, when that Amish girl flew through the air the other day, I went, oh. <laughs> they going to get me. I'm finna go before the Sanhedrin. <sighs> I've been there. It's all right. It works out. <laughs> Jesus comes every time. Oh, right. And it says, watch. What sort of power, but what kind of authority did you heal this fellow? Peter, look at verse 8. Then Peter, what was wrong with him? Tell me what was wrong with Peter. He's filled with what? Envy, religion, pride, selfishness. What's he filled with? Holy Spirit. See, do you have the Spirit of God in you? Say yes. yes. So, what's your worry? We're free to go. Yeah. Let's do some war. Yeah. Let's bring hell down. What do you say? Yes. Jesus. Jesus. Look what it says. Rulers, people, members. He, he wasn't rude. He wasn't aggressive. He, he just stood there looking at him like, what? What is this about? Are you serious? He said, if I'm being put on trial, and you know, every time I open my mouth, I go on trial. Because a lot of you in here have been saved as long as I have. But you've been in the same seat doing nothing the same amount of time. I got to change that. You have energy. You have experience. You have knowledge. Yes. You can do this job. Yes. That's right. Mm. Look what he said. If we're being put on the down for this good deed done to benefit a feeble, helpless cripple. 
by what means this man was restored to health, let it be known. I am here to report to you it's because of the name of Jesus. And it's the only name. You that are following Buddha, I rebuke you. You that are following Mary, I rebuke you. You can't say that. We don't do that here. Well, you're wrong then. You follow Jesus. There is one name given out of heaven amongst men whereby you must be saved. And he has been raised from the dead. What is wrong with you? You're old. Calm down. I got bumped the other day by the fire again. (laughs) And it's working. Look what this says. (laughs) I love this so much. The whole house of Israel, that in the name and through the power and authority of Jesus, say it, the name, name. the authority authority. of Jesus Christ. Shalabata. Whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. Now, I've been in every country. I've been in all these tombs of these other gods. You listen to me. No, sir. I was standing the other day in Chennai, India, the tomb of Stephen. The Buddhists, the Hindus, everybody go there to be touched by the spirit. Good karma, they call it. We call it the Holy Ghost. And the people are there. Don't you want to go in? They'll let you go in. You're American. They'll let you go in. No, I don't need Stephen. Right. Is Jesus somewhere? That's who I need. Yeah, come on, I don't need this tourist attraction. Yeah. I'm not against Stephen. You know that, right? Yeah. I don't give a flip where he's buried. Right. <laughs> I want Jesus. He's sitting at the right hand of the yeah. Father. And I, now that I'm interested in. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. And it said, look what it said. This is so amazing. By, by means of that this man is standing here and well before you and sound in body, this Jesus is the stone. Say, Jesus is the stone. He is the head. He is the cornerstone on which everything is built. Say it with me. Ready? I submit to it. it. Now, watch. And there is salvation. Here it says it right here in verse 12. In and through no one else. So I need you to negate all other responsibility you've given to false gods. Do it right now. No idolatry. Just Jesus. And it says what? Look at verse 13. When they saw what? What did they see? Boldness, courage. They, they just couldn't believe that such ignorant and unlearned people could have such energy. <laughs> it's just so awesome. I just find myself giggling over it. (laughs) Boy, I like this. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Look what it says. Boldness and unfettered eloquence of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and untrained in the schools. They marveled. And they recognize this is the only thing of value that they got right. You ready? They recognize that they had been with Jesus. That's how you need to be marked. 
People may not agree. They may get flustered with you. They may do a lot of things, but they need to, at the end of it all, they need to say, but they've been with Jesus. Come on. It needs to be recognized that that's what's wrong with you. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> okay. This is not my fault. I apologize to all of you, but I traveled so much. I got like millions of miles with United, right? Okay. So, serious. That's not a joke. So, I'm sitting like we was going to... Uh, Frankfurt. Is that correct? Yeah. And we're in Houston. I'm on this 777. I saw them a while ago. I went right by Boeing's thing where they make my jets. Thank y'all. Those, that, those Polaris seats I sit in, you do a good job. I got so many miles, I get bumped up every time. That is yummy. So, I'm that guy. I sit right behind the captain. That's my seat. Don't you dare try to get that. So I'm sitting there, right? I got my, I took Miss Hogan. I put her in her seat. She gets the one beside me. And so I put her things up. I do all that. I put, put her in a little strap and do all that stuff. And a stewardess is supposed to do that. But that's my job. Because that's Miss Hogan. So I go back to my chair, right? And all of a sudden, I was invaded. There must have been 15 of these stewardesses. They come rolling up on me. They go, you taking care of your wife? Yeah. Is that against the law now? No, no. We just don't see it very often. Now, we're going to do something for you. And they started singing happy birthday to me. <laughs> On a jet. <laughs> and I'm sitting there looking at that head purser lady. What are you doing? And she said, this birthday card is for you, Mr. Hogan. And we appreciate your business and on and on and on. And I said, who told you it was my birthday? I said, because it's tomorrow. She said, yeah, but it'll be in flight, won't it? I said, you're right. She said, I got you this big ice cream sundae, ready, with hot caramel. I said, now somebody's done gotten my goodies because that is what I like. <laughs> uh, you see, I don't eat very many of them because you can't. Now listen, and now about four or five of them came back about mid-flight and they go, we want to know why you love your wife so much. I said, are you sure? Can I talk freely? They said, you can. I said, okay. I said, because I was a bad guy. I'm a pastor's son and the church lied to me and I got mad and put me some guns on and did some things I'm not happy about. And then Jesus came, talked to me audibly in a jet and I got born again. And the purser, the head purser lady, she goes, I knew you was a Christian. <laughs> I said, I am. I am that guy. Come on. That's right. I said, I'm not just any Christian. I can raise the dead and heal the sick. And she goes, what? <laughs> said, so that's another conversation. Listen, it's beautiful. It's, yeah. Listen. That's right. The boldness, the joy, the happiness. The world needs us. I need you to be who Jesus is in you. Come on, let him out. Let that corn pop. Do you know that's the second time I heard that prophecy? Really? In the same month, it was, but it was in November. I, I heard you say it, I go, <gasps> And I told my wife, ah. <laughs> isn't that awesome? It is. Popcorn's coming. I like lots of butter, please. Thank y'all. <laughs> okay, let's do this and get 
because I got a little clip I want to show you and we'll be done. I want you to look at verse 16. This is what you need said about you because of goodness of God that has run through you. You need this phrase to be said by your enemies, by the religious establishment people, by the bad guys around you. And it needs to be this phrase. Verse 16, Acts chapter 4, it says, what are we to do with these men? They need to be out of options because of the goodness of God in your spirit. They need to run out because they can't intimidate you. You can't be bought. You are full of the Holy Ghost and the fire. I'm right about this, y'all. And look what this. For that an extraordinary miracle has been performed. A notable miracle took place. Say it with me. I want extraordinary. I want notable miracle. I want it in my spirit. And I want it in my premises. I want it to go through me into someone and heal them. (laughs) Chalabasha. Okay, my friend. Over there talking. I need my video. Okay, you got the noise? Y'all look. Turn up, jack up the noise. There you go. There you go. That's Spanish. That's me and my wife. You see us? You see that lady? She looks dead, right? Nombre Cristo Rey Shakalabata. Hold it right there. Leave it right there. Don't rerun it. Just leave it like that. Is that okay? You good? It's not going to affect nothing, right? All right, perfect. Look, I need you to look at that lady. I need you to understand that's in your country, that is Chicago. Illinois, just about straight down Interstate 90. <laughs> Hear me? Yeah. And we're there, and it's 17 degrees. It's so cold, golly, I got everything in my suitcase on. <laughs> I looked at like that show. What's that show? They, they do that bobsled and them people from Jamaica. Cool Runnings. Uh-huh. I look like Cool Runnings. <laughs> it's true (laughs) and these people walk up you see that lady you can see her hair the the brown at the top left okay she's the daughter they're from Puerto Rico these people the mama only speaks Spanish unfortunately so can I speak it I'm a Mexicano now look Parkinson's. <gasps> you can't fix that. No, you can't. My boss can. That lady's got Parkinson's. She's got dementia. And she got Alzheimer's. Any one of those is a death ticket. Say, so, yeah, we know. Say it. But let me, let me go ahead and say something to you about notable miracles. Notable miracles don't pay no attention to you and your little doubt and unbelief. When notable miracles roll in, son, they take over. I got so fussy with that lady, one on the top left there. I said, what are you doing bringing this 84-year-old woman out here? There, there's like four inches of ice on the roads. There's snow and big old flakes, freezing cold. I said, I almost didn't even come. I'm so cold. You know what she said to me? I need your hand on my mama. Because the percentage of her being healed goes up if you can touch her. I said, now, it ain't nothing to do with me. It's only the mercy of God that does that. She said, I realize that. 
but God's using you and I want that use on my mama. I said, deal. Laid hands on that lady. You see, you see us up there laying hands on her. Well, wait on me. Wait just a second. Don't pop that thing up yet. <laughs> and we all put, I stacked up my clothes. You ought to see. I look like, I look like the, what's that little funny white guy? Uh, Michelin man. I had so many clothes on, couldn't hardly drive. <laughs> yeah. Golly, it was cold. Wind's just a howling, boy. It was cold. We all went home. Nothing. We didn't nobody see anything. Three days. I don't know why it's three. I have no idea. But now, because now I'm fixing to lose some of you that were trying to stay with me. But this is where you get off the ship, right here. Because on the third day, the family hears something in Mama's room. So here they go running up to Mama because she's, she's Alzheimer's. She's dementia. She's Parkinson's. She's nearly in a coma. You see her there. Look at her. But they hear movement. The whole family runs to Mama's room. Open the door. Mom's putting her clothes on. Now, that's all yay God till I tell you why. Because there's, there's this being that I run around with. I used to think he goes with us. That's not how the game rolls out. He's the glowing man. His name is Jesus. He came through the roof of that house in Peru, Illinois, 35 miles from Chicago. Came through the roof. The lady sees this glowing being in her room. He walks up to her, touches her. Didn't say a word. Walks right back up through the roof. She gets up healed. Oops. Bring it. <laughs> Say it. I want the glowing man. Say it. I want Parkinson's healed. Say it. I want dementia healed. Say it. I want Alzheimer's healed. Say it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Yes. All right, jump, jump her over there. Now I want to look, look. That's her. That's the lady from the wheelchair. Look at her. Eighty-four years old. She a little thumbs up. She's shooting me a little thumbs up deal. Come on. Okay. You know what her thing was? She told him, "I'm going to mall." I could get my hair fixed. <laughs> you women, y'all are a mess. <laughs> I'm serious. You get healed by the glowing man and your, your first thought is, I need a hairdo? <laughs> I personally don't care. <laughs> I just want the glowing man to come touch you. Amen. Holy Ghost. Hear me? Fire. And now listen. This is funny. And I'm on my way, so you might as well get used to it. This little old grandma. Uh-oh, she's gone. Hey, boy, get back on your job. Don't you ever think I'm afraid, son? <laughs> we made friends earlier. We're okay. He put a thing down my shirt, so he's got to be all right. All right? <laughs> Holy Ghost. You know what she said? She told the preachers over there, she said, get that man back up here. 
They go, why? Because I got to give him a kiss. <laughs> so they called, they called me and I told my wife, set it up. I'm going to get my kiss. <laughs> you wait till you get old. You just wait. You want them when you can get them, buddy. <laughs> Woo! Come on. I like this job. Can you tell you? Man, I like this. I like hearing you laugh. I like... I like what's fixing to happen to the ones y'all don't run off as soon as you stand up. Because the rest of you, the door's right there. Because I don't give a flip. I'll let you keep that little old pet you rolled in here with. That you keep feeding drugs to thinking you're going to get all right. No, it takes Jesus. And that's why he's got people like me. I'm aggressive and noisy and a lot of things. I can do my job. And I like it. And I like that little old lady getting healed. Yeah. I can't wait for her to, because they send me these pictures and these videos. You'll see her, two forks, two. <laughs> <laughs> Poor little thing's going to be 50 pounds heavier when I see her. Golly, this is awesome. You hear me? Yeah. There are notable miracles. Amen. And they are current yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah. I need you to understand that. Yeah. It's on, Bubba. It's Donkey Kong time. <laughs> it is. So, it's okay to pray for a few hands. Oh, yeah. We okay? Yeah. So, if y'all will stand up, please. Thank you. Well, it's, it's getting close to my bedtime. I'm old people. <laughs> old people had to go to bed early. Yeah, I'm just going to ask the uh, parents if they got their kids to come get them and bring them back in for prayer. Have at it. Yeah. Okay. You want me to or are you going to do it? You do it. Parents, bring your kids back for some, some reason. Yeah. For prayer. <laughs> for prayer. For prayer. Sorry, baby. <laughs> yeah. For prayer. <laughs> you see why I like my job? I'm good at it. I can incite, I can incite anybody. <laughs> yep. So y'all don't know, but I work in a war zone. And nearly every night, you can lay down in my bed and you can hear gun battles. <laughs> it changes you. Hear me? It changes you. I got my little great grandchild, little great great granddaughter there. My wife, you see how much I, I, I fuss over her. I'm supposed to. Yeah. It's legal. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I really, I really like it. Look, Just a few weeks ago, I was out on my, on my ranch. I have a ranch. I, I grow food and cows and things and feed the poor. Amen. That's my hobby. I love that thing, right? And, uh, and, and I'm on my tractor. I have this tractor. I like that thing. I get out there with that old bush hog. It's 120 degrees. I sweat like a stuck hog. I like that tractor. I like being out there. I like that manual labor. I like being out there with those people and working, these Indians that work on our farm. I like that. It's really good for me. And all of a sudden, this one of my workers comes up to me, flags me down. He says, Brother David, you need to come. Some people have come on the ranch. I said, no, nah, that's not possible. I went over there on my tractor, and sure enough, there's this real fancy F-250 crew cab, brand new, sitting there, guys sitting there with guns. I got off. I have a machete on my thing because there's critters where I live, and they will bite you, <laughs> and you have to fight back. So I get off that tractor, and I go rolling over there, and you'll never, listen to me, you'll never believe 
what God asked me to do. Now, I'm going to tell you why I'm here. There's a new day. You got to let people in here that maybe you wouldn't. People are wanting to get saved, but the church has it blocked. Hear me? And you don't believe it, but it's true. So I roll up on this guy, and all right, and he's big old boy, guns. He says to me, you know who I am? I say, yeah, I know who you are. What are you doing on my property? I said, who'd you pay? What's his name? He told me. I said, he's fired. Nobody has right to put the guns on this woman. Do you understand me? Mm-hmm. I don't care who you are. You're fired. Well, you're not much of a Christian. Yes, I am. I really love this lady right here. That's right. Hear me? Yeah. So I'd suggest just back it up, leaving her alone. You'll find that old gang member if you don't care for buddy. And I told him, you're going to have to get off my property. He said, look, you're right. Shouldn't have done it this way. Ah, it's too late now. You know who he is? He's the third in command cartel boss of our area. Oops. Hey, y'all don't understand that very much. You live in your little cul-de-sac. You got your little redwood fence and you're just, you're just safe. And I bless you. I'm not cursing you. I'm bless you for that. I don't care. It's just not that way where I live. And I said to him, what do you want with me? I said, because you and I are enemies. You work for the devil. I work for the father. And I will not submit to you. He said, we already know that. He said, I need something from you. I said, no. I don't care what his name is. I will do nothing with you. He said, okay. Can I explain? I said, help yourself. Waste of time. Because I don't agree with this babies being stolen and cut up baby parts. Because one little baby is a million dollars. And they steal these children and make soldiers out of them. And they take these young girls and they make them sex slaves. And Boy, I don't like that. You hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I'm vocal. You hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I don't like it. It's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So as far as I'm concerned, it plays out like it must. Answer is no. Yeah. Yeah. And so he, he says... This is hilarious. (laughs) He said, you were having a meeting on this day up here in the front. We have a big complex and there's about two, three thousand folks in a pile was worshiping Jesus. And we have about two thousand, twenty thousand watts of speakers. Just bang. You can hear us for ten miles. (laughs) And so he said, I was riding on the highway and I heard y'all's noise, he called it. (laughs) We call it worship. He called it noise. Go figure. And this guy, he says to me, I parked my truck on a ranch down below, and I I changed my clothes and put on dirty workman clothes, and I snuck into y'all's meeting. I said, what? Because I got guards. I got people watching because they coming. That's for sure. He said, I got there, and all of a sudden, you're standing up there with about two, three hundred, and they're pastors, right? He don't know what to call them. And y'all were hollering a word, fuego de Dios, fire of God. Fuego! He said, I saw it with my eyes. A hundred, 150 people pick up and fly in the air. I said, yep, you was in the meeting, all right. (laughs) That's what was going on. He said, and it went over and over, and there was so much chaos. He said, I came down to to close to see what y'all were doing. 
How are you? What kind of energy? Where do you have it? What is it? He said, and one of the guys grabbed me and pulled me up there. And you put your hands on me. He said, you didn't recognize me. He was about 20 of y'all. Something grabbed me on the inside, picked me up and threw me about five yards. He said, I went, I I passed out. He said, I wake up and all of y'all are gone. He said, now, what's the name of that power? I said, now, I'm interested in talking about this. I said, I don't need your drugs, son. I got what's called the Holy Ghost. It's el Espíritu Santo, el fuego de Dios. It's the the Holy Spirit and the fire of God. He said, I need help with this. He said, 38 years ago, he said, I had you studied. I know everything about you now. I said, why? Why? I'm a tractor guy that loves Indians. I don't want any exposure. I don't want any popularity. I want Jesus. He said, 38 years ago, you made a decision that you were going to come here to Mexico and help this nation. And 38 years ago, I made a decision. I was going to steal and rape from this nation. He said, I was wrong. I said, yes, you are wrong. He said, now, how do I become like you? I said, you don't for me. I'm not going to do that. You can't join me. If you join me, the next cartel, the next one over, is going to come here and kill my entire family. He said, I already know that as well. He said, but I know where your office is in Texas. I know all the property you have around the world. I know everything about you, David. I said, I don't like that. He said, doesn't matter. I said, okay, what do you want? He said, you're going to let me come to your house in Texas. I said, that ain't going to happen. He said, and I'm bringing my family, and I'm bringing one of my, my mafia captains and his family. And you're going to take care of us, and you're going to teach us Jesus. I said, no, I'm not. He said, I need you to do, because I know how to talk to you now. I've figured you out. He said, I need you to sit right here and ask your God if I'm right or wrong. (laughs) I said, all right. I said, God, I ain't taking that guy in my house. And then all of a sudden, Jesus spoke to me. You know what he said to me? I was in prison and you didn't visit me. I was hungry and you didn't give me a, 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 a meal. I was thirsty and you didn't give me a drink of water. I said, you're right. I'll take you in the house. I said, I got to put some dates together, but I need you off my property. You're going to get us all killed. He said, I need something else out of you. Y'all ready? He said, I need a papa. Never had one. And I want that fire you got. He said, you have worked around us your whole life and none of us can catch you. God's protecting you. I said, deal. Uh, So I thought, he's going to come to Texas, right? The United States government is seeking this guy. He ain't going to make it. I said, sure, you can come. I said, but I'm not going to help you. He said, that's my problem. I said, y'all, I gave him some dates, April of 2023. 
All of a sudden, my oldest boy, he's, what is he, 50? Because I told my family, I said, look, I got us in a problem. By doing right, I got the whole cartel after us. (laughs) Now they want to get saved. (laughs) That's a problem. Do you hear me? (laughs) But I need to know if your gospel is big enough Mm, to take Mm -hmm. what your mind can't understand. God's fixing to do something big in his planet. Amen. That's right. And you're going to have to have your doors open. Mm-hmm. That's right. Amen. Because undesirables need Jesus. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yep. Okay? Yes, sir. So they came, and my son went out and opened the gate for them because I leave the gates locked because you have to. Yeah. This is in Texas. And he comes, he comes in my house. He's looking around. He said... You know what he said to me? Finally, I meet a Christian. You hear me? I need you to be a Christ-like human being that can allow people that don't agree with you, that don't believe like you do, that don't dress right, that kill babies, that rape and pillage. They need Jesus. That's right. And if God's going to open the door for me, I'm going to walk through it. That's right. And it is controversial, and it is, it could seriously damage a lot of things. Y'all got it? Yeah. So he, they all there, him and his captain and all their family, and I put them up, and I told my family, this is what I told my family, this is Jesus. We treat them like they're Jesus the righteous. And my family said, we follow you, Dad. Didn't you say that, Mom? Thank you. I love you, buddy. <clears throat> so the next morning, right? It's 3.30. That's the time I go to prayer. I'm walking through the house. Boom, boom, boom. All of a sudden, somebody speaks to me. I turn and look. It's the cartel boss. Dressed. He said, I knew you was coming through. Can I go with you? Y'all hearing me? Are y'all listening to what I'm saying to you? And I said to him, what do you want? He said, I want to be like you. I want to follow Jesus. I said, come on, boy. I went over, opened up my prayer center, got the Bible going in Spanish so they could understand it. And I'm telling you, four o'clock in the morning, his family, the, 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 the captain and his family, they walked into that thing at four o'clock in the morning, not even born again. And they just sit there and watch me worship God for five hours every day for a week. Something to be said about diligent people. That's right. So, it's the last day. He says to me, can we pray, please? We want your Jesus. I said, sure. I'll take the heat. That's all right. What did Jesus tell us? Go into all the world and make disciples. Had no idea it meant cartel bosses. <laughs> Isn't that something? What a joy. You see why I'm on fire and livid and man, God's moving. That's right. There are notable miracles. There are people getting saved that nobody would even let get saved. We have to do this. We have to. Come on. Come on, light it up. Like they told me when I was a kid, kick the tires and light the fire. (laughs) So I did, worked out. (laughs) So now, can we pray for sick? Uh, Okay, all right, please. I don't care how many people have prayed for you. I respect whoever has prayed for you. I do. Thoroughly. 
I never demean somebody trying to help somebody else. Never would. I won't. I don't even do that to Buddhists or Hindus or Muslims. I will not. I refuse. They are on the right trail. They just need Jesus. Hear me? I know why they told Paul, your, your much knowledge has made you crazy. <laughs> it's probably true. <laughs> Look, you ought to see who's getting saved. We have 30 churches that there are no civilians in them. All of them, every born again person in there is cartel. Wow. 30 churches. Man. Come on now. I'm right. Turns out I'm right. Yeah. yeah. So if you got sickness in your body, please, I'm not saying I'm any good. I, I would say this to you. This is what I will tell you from honesty. If the glowing man comes, I hope he does. Boy, it'd be so beautiful. If he does come, you understand I'd be at the back of the line. I just... I just don't, he's so amazing. He's so big, so powerful. The more I get close to him, the less I think I'm all right. I need him so much. <clears throat> so if you're sick in your body, uh, if you, if, first of all, if you have incurables, I'd really like just touch you, just because I learned something going out here all these years and years. Because it was used to be just Mexico. You're right, okay. but now we're in all the all the continents. We have churches everywhere, and I learned something going to all these places, y'all. You know, it's not what we're being taught by certain political people. I have found out that if you, it doesn't matter what color, what language, what people group, come on up. You're good. Come on up. Right up here. Make, who, who's a, who's a uh, usher? Come here, ushers. Come right up here. I just need a shoulder width to walk because I walk and move. I got to get my 10,000 in. Come on up. Make a line. Make a line.